Joseph Gordon-Levitt joins us now. Good morning to you, Joseph Gordon-Levitt. Good Gordon morning. Wow. Good to Listen, be here. I remember Travis very well. I, I, I thought he had a lot of swagger. He was very charismatic. Mm. I, I like the mantra number one was always be hustling. That's the core value number one. Yes, and at the time when it broke out, people were like, wow, and in awe of him. Mm -hmm. In the court of public opinion, it has not turned out to be the case. I was wondering, did you have an opinion of him before you played him and how you prepared playing him? I didn't really know who he was personally. I, of course, knew about Uber and yes. realized that it had all of a sudden become everywhere so fast. And, you know, it really it was the fastest growing startup in history. Mm. Uh -huh. And uh, I, I got to know a lot of people that work closely with him. And a lot of people were saying the same things you just yes. said about how inspiring he was, how energetic he was. He was. Yes. But uh, he also, I think, made some decisions that were really questionable decisions, some uh, ethically questionable yes. behavior inside the company. And uh, this show doesn't shy away from either side of him. Mm -hmm. yeah. So what did, what did you want the story to be about him? How did you want to portray him? So, you know, I'm not a journalist like you all. I'm, I'm an actor, so it's my job not to just talk about what happened. We were relying on the New York Times journalism for what happened. Mm. My job is to find out how it felt. Mm. Who is the guy as a human being? So that's, again, why I wanted to go beyond the, the what, what was said about him in the press and, and talk to the people that, that were actually close to so him. What did you find out? Yeah. Well, yeah. Uh, exactly what you said, which is that a lot of the kind of demonization that you find is maybe a little oversimplified. And I think you can judge a person's actions without judging their personhood. Mm -hmm. And I think it's really important that we hold him accountable and hold his company accountable for the laws they broke and the, and the negative impact they had on all sorts of people's lives. But I think it's also not that useful to just reduce somebody to a villain Right. When they're a whole human being, and, yeah. and and so I wanted to show that whole human. Yeah, right away you get you take uh, viewers back home with Travis. You see his family, meet his brother, his parents. Uh, you say this is bigger than Uber. Mm. Though. That's a big takeaway. Uh, explain that. I, I, that was one of the biggest reasons for me that I was inspired to do this show was because I think there is something about it that's that's bigger than Travis and and bigger than Uber, which is when a company is prioritizing profits over everything and and doesn't mind who they have to step on or mm. negatively impact in order to produce those profits you're going to keep getting these companies doing harm we keep asking like how do we fix facebook how do we fix this that until they have different incentives where they can care about more than you know shareholder value they're not going to fix any of those problems because it's it's not good business. Yeah, speaking of incentives, one of the incentives to watching this series is the all-star cast. Yeah. I mean, Kyle Chandler, Uma Thurman, yourself, amongst others. Uh, what is it like being on the set with that type of talent? Does it raise your level of game when you're acting? Okay, so you mentioned Uma Thurman. Of course. Who, who plays Ariana Huffington, Joseph. And nails it to the wall. <laughs> Her, she is so good in so this. Good. But, I mean, okay, so I was, I, was, I think, 14 when Pulp Fiction came out. Uh -huh. That movie is a very, you know, it's a fixture in my yes. appreciation of, of art and, and she's just such a glowing presence mm. and, and her performance in this is so stellar. I was just in a state of euphoria acting really? against her. Yeah, yeah. Wow. That's a good way. Listen, you nailed Travis too. Oh, thank you. Yeah, we got to see many sides of Travis and we can't underestimate what Uber has accomplished here. I think, do you have an Uber account? I do. Yeah. <laughs> I thought you were going to say like, Lyft right there. Yeah. Lyft, I, I not, but they, so. they bought and Postmates. And I have too, yes. They, you, yes. So even, I, I haven't gotten an in an Uber in years because of the pandemic, uh -huh. but they bought Postmates. Yes. So now, you know, yes, I, I have to admit. And, yes. and, I, and I feel a little bit bad every time I order from Postmates. Do you? I, well, I, I think there's probably some real questions about how they treat restaurants and uh -huh. how restaurants are able to stay in business so, mm. with these kinds of businesses. So you made a really big point earlier uh, mm. about how companies behave and why they behave the way they do. And particularly startups, they take money from investors. They got to make good on that money. And yep. they, they hurt some people in the process. Yep. Do you think a show like this, a series like this, is going to help people rethink that system? I think that we as a whole culture have some big changes that we have to make in our minds about what success is, is. and what a good company is. Yep. Like really big changes yep. or we're just gonna drive off a cliff and whether you're talking about whatever issue you care about, whether it's the environment or justice or health, 
until businesses are responsible for more than profits, mm. we're just going to keep having these huge problems. People are asking those questions. But can I just talk about you from back in the day? Because I used to watch you in uh, Third Rock from the Sun. Okay. But you've been doing this for a while. <laughs> it's true. Yeah. So how old were you when you started? I was six years old. And you loved first it at job six? I you knew? I loved it. There's a story my mom tells. I, I only kind of remember the first job I ever did. It was a commercial. We were in uncomfortable clothes. There was fake rain. She thought, he's never going to want to do this again. We walked out of the soundstage after they said rap. And I was like, it's nighttime? <laughs> I was so You had no idea. It. Yeah, I, I had been so into it. I didn't even realize that night had fallen. I, yeah. I've just always loved getting to be on a team, working with a crew, and telling stories. It's, it's my favorite thing to and do. And we love you, man. You're one of the best in the business. Thank you. Yeah, yeah that's really yeah. cool you to say. You know what's cool about him? He says it, dancing with his little boys every day gives him pure glory. <laughs> I do not true. love somebody like that. Well, they're they're going to love you voice Pinocchio, acting. your next project. Yeah, yeah, I can't wait for them to see Pinocchio. It's, yeah. re it's really true. I got to play Jiminy Cricket. <laughs> we'll talk about that when Thank it you. comes out. And no you're doubt. giving Nate a run for his money in the dap route. Look at that suit. You guys are both. You win today. I'll take it. Super pumped. Both look good. <laughs> He's in Super Pump. The battle for Uber premieres this Sunday on Showtime, Division of Paramount.